it can it can add more magnitude um, to, to the upside uh, than it than if these didn't exist. And so, for example, I I am doubtful that ETFs are going to drive the next bull market, but I think that as that bull market materializes, that's that's another ease of inflow that could make the the, the bull market do better than it would if, if these ETFs did not exist. Hey guys, welcome back to Everyday Finance. In this video, Lynn Alden discuss about Bitcoin. According to Lynn Alden, the companies that offer ETFs, a lot of this was known. So it's almost like they're already setting up cash that they're going to use, going to need. There will be some money leaving Bitcoin and coming into a mix of the rest. So Lynn Alden had a really wide area where nothing would be a surprise. If we had a $5,000 candle, it meant that there was a big sell after the news. But there was another kind of warning that there was, so most of the calls were for either a God candle or a sell the news event. Not many calls were for shaky. We didn't get any particularly interesting seats, so the fact that's what we got is kind of the pain deal. Where if you were shorting it, you didn't really make money if you were looking for crazy, exciting action on the upside. You didn't really get that either, so just pick one thing that people aren't really talking about. That's how things usually work. But Lynn wasn't sure that we'd have that sideways move anyway, more or less the same as the price movement. Lynn Alden saw this quarter, or any other quarter, which is just noise. Also, there's a lot of the capital that's dying to get into. Bitcoin has found a way instead. This somewhat normalizes the currency, and lots of things Lynn Alden discuss. So please watch the video to end, and like, share this video, and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance. Thanks. Yeah, this one I wasn't really surprised by for a couple reasons, and I, I described the ETF as the most boring thing. Uh, kind of in Bitcoin at the moment, uh, which kind of caught some flack and some people were polarized in that comment. But basically, provocative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, basically, the, the ETF providers are, you know, a lot of this was aware, right? So it's, it's like they're, they're already lining up liquidity that they're going to need. There's going to be some exit from GBTC. Uh, there's going to be, in, you know, inflows to some combination of the others. Um, so I, I had a really big range where nothing would be surprising. If we had a five thousand dollar candle, uh, if we had a big sell the news event, but the other the other kind of signal was there are so many people calling for either a god candle or a sell the news event. There was hardly anyone calling for choppy seats, you know, nothing particularly remarkable. And so the fact that that's what we got is kind of the pain trade, yep. where if you were shorting it, um, you know, you didn't really make money off the short. If you were hoping for like you know crazy spicy action, the upside, you didn't really get that either. Uh, and so the whatever people are not really talking about is if you had to pick one, that's normally how things go. Um, but, you know, I didn't have high conviction that we'd have that sideways move anyway. It's more just like, for me, the this quarter of any any specific quarter of price action is just noise to me. Um, and the other thing is that um, there's a, a lot of the capital that's just dying to come into Bitcoin has found a way, right? Mm. Uh, instead, what this does is this this normalizes the asset to some extent um, and it, it provides a long-term option for for some capital to start gradually moving in but there's not a lot of people that are day one just raring to go the second it comes in that haven't already bought at an exchange or a broker or gbtc or uh micro strategy yeah they either bought a bitcoin proxy or they bought bitcoin and so the idea that there'd be just like a, a like ten billion dollars wanted to flow in in the first week, I think was unrealistically optimistic, and that that's part of why, um, like I actually, you know, in my in my research, for example, I, I have not been writing a ton about the ETF. Um, you know, I kind of waited till we're pretty close to it, talked about it. Uh, my next report's going to uh, obviously update some of the things that have happened since then, but it's not been this like giant recurring theme of mine because it's just, in my view, it's not one of the key variables, even though it is a variable among many. According to Lynn Alden, even more so when Bitcoin is held so tightly as it's not like it's a non-variable. That's for sure. The way Lynn Alden would probably put it is, and the way put in from what Lynn have learned, it doesn't really change how Lynn Alden see the next two years going, but it can make things bigger to the better than if these didn't exist. And so, for example, Lynn don't think ETFs will drive the next bull market. But when that bull market comes around, that's another way that these ETFs may help the bull market do better than it would if they weren't their existence. And you know that money tends to follow price. 
So it's Lynn Alden agree with you that the next bull market will likely come from the same types of places that the last one did before this bear market. There were bull markets during this bear market. A lot of quick money got out of Bitcoin. Let's back to the Lynn Alden interview. So I, I think being tied into the tens of trillions of dollars of managed assets is important. I mean, there, you know, there's really tens of trillions of dollars managed by uh, uh, RIAs um, or kind of big bank like broker networks. And a lot of that capital literally couldn't get into Bitcoin. And so it's, it's either stuck there because it's a retirement account or just because that's where the person wants it. And, you know, they might be open to putting one or two or three percent into Bitcoin. It just has not been an option because none of the vehicles have been kind of up to par. Uh, for those types of environments. And so to the extent that they're available, that is important uh, over a multi-year time frame. That can add billions of dollars of inflow, which has a multiplier effect, uh, especially when Bitcoin is very tightly held as it is now. And so that that is, it's not like it's a non-variable. Um, the way I would probably put it is, and the way I put it in my research is that uh, it doesn't really affect my view of the direction of the next two years, uh, but it, it can it can add more magnitude. Um, to, to the upside uh, than, it, than if these didn't exist. And so, for example, I, I'm doubtful that ETFs are going to drive the next bull market. But I think that as that bull market materializes, that's that's another ease of inflow that could make the, the, the bull market do better than it would if, if these ETFs did not exist. Um, and so it's, it's, you know, money tends to chase price, ironically. So it's like, I, I think that the next bull market probably comes from the same types of directions that the bull market the prior bull markets came from which is you know we went through this bear market a lot of the fast money's out of of the, of bitcoin it's kind of gravitated towards those strong hands people that are dollar cost averaging in uh people that just you know they they're like listen to podcasts like this and they don't really plan on selling for the foreseeable future they're kind of locked in and so eventually you kind of get that really tight supply situation and then you get uh, better liquidity conditions. So I, I've, mm -hmm. I've been kind of beating the drum for a while that Bitcoin is very correlated with uh, global liquidity metrics, uh, more so than any other asset I track. Um, and it's also the inverse is true. So if I look at all the things that are correlated with Bitcoin, liquidity is, is arguably the highest. So the co like when the liquidity goes up, that tends to be constructive for Bitcoin price. But then it's especially so when you've been in a bear market for a while and a lot of those loosely held coins have gravitated towards the stronger hands that are only going to come out with like a 5x increase pretty much. Right. Um, and as like a starting, like basically w once you breach all time highs, when you start to get a little bit of distribution from those types of hands. Um, and then also when you break all time highs, that's when, you know, people in their RAs are saying like, why aren't, why aren't we in Bitcoin? The ETFs came out months ago. What are we doing? And yeah. Yeah. so then, then you can get some of the inflows, and that's where I think it could add to it. it it's certainly a constructive, positive variable, but it's, for me, it's not the key catalyst, most likely. ETF is currently the easiest way to do that, but there are other ways as well in theory that should have a volatility is going down. But that doesn't mean Lynn Alden don't think we'll have a big bull run and then a probably pretty big drop, Lynn, think it could start easing the pain. You know, if Bitcoin's going up or down. So way up and a lot of people hold on to it at that point. So that can bring it back down to the bottom. If you look at some of the past bull cycles, you'll notice that this one had the first one with a rounded top and the other ones all had these crazy liquid spike tops. M. And this was the first one with a round top. The bottom wasn't as safe. There was still a big fall because of the FX thing. But Lynn Alden think that's going to be the rule from now on. Of course, Bitcoin can always surprise you. Let's back to the interview. So I don't know if they specifically will, but I do think that on on average, the more widely held something is, the more the less volatile it, it can be. Uh, and the more, because the more liquid it can be, right? So when Bitcoin is small enough that like FTX, like reapothecating, you know, one and a half billion dollars worth of Bitcoin can really mess it up. Um, that's, you know, that when that kind of thing can happen, uh, it, it's going to move price more. Um, whereas if it's if it's five times as widely held, if it's ten times as widely held, um, then there's fewer entities that can play games and, and kind of really mess up the price. Uh, and it's it's more the assets more diffused in portfolios that are not like quote unquote crypto focused uh, that all get liquidated at once basically and so you know to the extent that people have it as a slice in a portfolio and rebalance it from time to time whether it's the ETF or other vehicles I mean the ETF is now the most convenient vehicle for that but then, you know there's there's also other ways to do it um, 
that that should, in theory, have a dampening effect on volatility. It doesn't mean I don't think we're going to have a big bull run and then a probably a pretty big drop, um, but I think it could start taking the edge off uh, in either direction because, you know, if, if Bitcoin's way up and, and it's pretty widely held at that point, um, you know, that can rebalance it back down to the downside a little bit. So if you look at some of the, you know, th this past bull cycle was the first one that had like a rounded top. Yes. Um uh, the other the other ones all had these like crazy liquid spike tops, right. mm -hmm. and this was the first rounded top. Uh, and unfortunately, the the bottom was not as uh, benign. There still was like a big kind of collapse because the F, you know partially because of the F, FTX thing. Um, but I think that that's I would assume that's the norm going forward. Of course, Bitcoin can always surprise, but I, I think <laughs> yep. that you know that those spikes are a sign of kind of a, a less mature asset, and then as as it reaches you know, bigger amounts and, and things like that, you, you should expect more more of those kind of rounded rounded type of price action unless something extreme happens to it. Unless, you know, you have a sovereign debt crisis in a major country or war or, you know, you, you, things like that. Helen Alden believe we'll see a net increase. But as Bitcoin prices rise, you know the how much see the number of coins that can be held in an ETF. Even if the dollar amount is bigger, it's still pretty tough to get a lot of coins into ETFs. Bitcoin has been around for 15 years, the distribution in a strange way. If the ETF came out when Winklev wanted it to, it shows that they were smart to want it. But if it came out, there might be more worries about how kind a very large portion of it is, which had been kept in these huge honeypots for 15 years. It's now out in the wild, so it's hard to tame. If you learned something from this video, then please like this video and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance, and we will meet next video. Thanks.